right. Uh, good morning, everyone, and thank you for being here. Shara, thank you very much. And welcome to WCDCon US, uh, ninth developer conference, uh, user conference, and the one that has attracted the largest number of people in our history of running uh, developer conferences. So welcome. Uh, my task is to get you started and, uh, and get you going on, on the real talks that you came here to listen to and, and uh, give you a little bit of an overview of what the company is trying to do on a larger scale. So what I would like you to remember from this conversation is ideally uh, where we are headed, what our primary motivations and visions are, and how everything fits together. And I'm going to end with a little bit of uh, technical direction about various products as well. So I'm going to introduce myself in a slightly different way uh, to start. I'm a very technical guy. I'm the chief architect of the company. I, I'm, I used to work in IBM for eight years before starting WS2, and I'm very fond of the technology side of the equation. I uh, tend to run the company and our entire product vision in a way that is focused on long term. We don't get excited by hype. We learn from the hype. We figure out what's in it for real and figure out how to incorporate it in what we're doing. And we think of everything as it's just a matter of time and effort and code, and we can get it done. And we, we, don't, uh, uh, we, we are not uh, worried about hard technical challenges. We take them on, and we try to solve them to the best of our abilities. And of course, open source is a big part of our vision and culture and approach, and I'll talk more about that as we go along. And one last bullet is important. I don't think the customer is always right. So we, we love to talk to customers, and we learn from you. Uh, we don't always uh, bend over to customer requirements under any condition. We love to hear your feedback. We want you to challenge us, and we will challenge you right back. And, uh, and that's the culture that we are trying to get everybody to, to adopt. And, and also, our view is we are in the business of creating middleware. We are supposed to know what we are doing. You guys are in the business of consuming middleware, for the most part. There are some of you who create incredible technology yourselves. And as a result, it's our job to help you go in the right direction. And if we mess it up, we will correct it. And that's, that's something we, we try to do uh, you know, uh, often and, and early. OK, so uh, let me now kind of talk a little bit about the high-level vision of what WC2 is trying to do for you. And of course, which is to help you connect your world of IT, your world of people, your applications, everything that you deal with. Uh, this is not some new thing anymore. Everybody's talking about connecting the world, connected business, connected enterprise, digital enterprise. There's so many variations to the theme. But fundamentally, it's all about providing integration so you can create new value, new innovation, showing up where your customers are, extend your boundaries that you, that you reach, become viral, all these aspects that everybody's wishing to achieve. So we're not going to uh, spend too much time talking about what does it take to do that, what are the mechanisms. Uh, but I wanted to kind of give a, a, a view of how this fits and why you need the kind of technology that we are creating in order to do that. Obviously, for you to be here, you believe that. You wouldn't be here if you don't like WC2 stuff uh, and have some interest in it, at least. And uh, we certainly appreciate that. And we want to explain how we think about the bigger problem and why we have all these pieces and how all the pieces fit together. Um, of course, the real world for most of you looks something like this, right? There's all kinds of stuff. There is no simple, beautiful architecture. There's no uh, tiers of uh, systems of engagement, systems of record. Uh, you know, the reality doesn't work like that in many cases. And so it really is not an easy thing to do when you try to start from here and, and connect the world. Of course, as vendors, we don't like this stuff. So we have a snake oil solution. Most people do. Uh, and you know, and, and uh, California is familiar with snake oil, so I don't need to explain that. A, a, uh, but, but in reality, it's never, never this simple. And, and this approach is necessary for most vendors because if you have one product, uh, you, know, you have to look at it from that point of view. Uh, this is a tool I'm sure everybody's heard of. Uh, this is a quote everybody's heard of. If you only have a ta hammer, everything looks like a nail. So if you have one thing, then you know, people say, oh, you just need to buy this thing, and magic happens, and everything is fine. And, and most of our competitors started off with one product companies. That fundamentally differentiates WC2 from everybody. We started the company 10 years ago, 2005. And the first slide deck we showed to uh, seed investors, angel investors, had three products we were going to build. And I had another seven grayed out saying, we're going to build all this stuff. And surprisingly, they didn't kick us in the head and say, what the heck is wrong with you, and go away. Uh, because most people don't start a company like that, saying we're going to build a you know, product portfolio to go and compete with, with the entire platform of middleware. But that's what we started with. And that's been fundamentally a driving force for the things that we are able to do for our customers. The fact that we have looked at the whole problem holistically and tried to solve it in a clean and elegant way instead of just uh, putting pieces together by picking pieces up. 
Um, uh, everyone knows that uh, in order to become a connected organization, whatever the kind of connections that you're trying to make, you do need a set of technologies. You need a set of components. You need a set of integration technologies. You need management. You need all kinds of things. And one product is not a platform. And so everyone talks about a platform, but having a platform is fundamentally critical. And we are quite unique in that, uh, in achieving that. <clears throat> so one, one aspect of our, the way we work is that we try very hard to think hard and think deeply about what we do. Uh, this is a term that, that uh, uh, Paul used to love to use. Uh, Paul is my co-founder. He's currently off doing a PhD. Uh, he's on study leave doing a PhD in, in UK. Uh, he, uh, he loved this term called drive-by architecture, which is, you see this in many organizations where, where you present to some, you know, usually a senior person, the person reviews it and say, yeah, I like this one, I don't like that one. And then you do this one because you know, that's what the top-down order is. And the problem with that is uh, they don't necessarily have all the context to make the right kind of decisions on things. And architecture is, is often deep and subtle. It's not simple decision saying, well, you can go left, I can go right. And, uh, and it's very important that, that uh, as, a, as a middleware company, we take that risk for you as much as possible. So we make judgment calls. There are some things we say, well, we're not doing that. Sorry, we're not doing that. That's it. And we had uh, SCA and JBI are two big ones that are uh, not, not relevant and important anymore, but they were five years ago and certainly 10 years ago, they were very relevant. And we made a judgment call saying we are not doing that. And in that case, we were right. And there are other things we made that we were not right. And then we try to fail fast and correct it quickly. And the, the primary model is always thinking long term. So if you look at the Gartner hype curve, we ignore the hype and try to figure out where is this thing going to land? Where is the plateau of productivity? And design to that and then wait for the world to recover and come to that point. Right? And, and the way we run the company as well, we don't look at revenue by product. We don't look and say, oh, we put all this money into this product. It's not making revenue. Let's kill it. We don't look at it like that. We look at it as, is this piece of technology needed in the larger scale of the problems that we're trying to solve? If it is, then it'll get there. And if you haven't got it right, we'll keep working on it. And we don't just kill it off because, OK, it's not revenue generating properly, so we're going to kill it off. <clears throat> A, a, the key is comprehensive platform thinking. And this is not something new. This is what the company was founded on. This is the vision and the motivation and the driving force behind everything we do and why we do it. Um, so very quickly, the company as a whole, over 10 years, we, we started off with the, with the idea of wanting to become the number one middleware platform. Open source has been fundamental to the company. Every piece of software we write is open source. It's also the, uh, with, we started off with the vision of saying we want to build a comprehensive middleware platform, not just the connection of things, a global company that operates in the Apache style of execution, Apache style of communicating and interacting with people and, and interacting with customers as well. And, and it's, uh, and uh, sorry, I forgot to uh, change the first line. It should say nearly 10 years later. I used this slide in our European conference, which was three months before. Um, and really, we are the only company in the world that has designed and built a middleware platform. Yes, I know IBM and Oracle and all these companies have a platform, but a lot of this uh, gap fill acquisitions uh, that was done and beautiful marketing to put into a single package. And in practice, when you try to use that single package, it's not a single package, and we all know that. And we are the only, also, the only vendor to offer a fully integrated architecture that can deploy everything from an on-premise kind of model to a private cloud to a public cloud environment with the same code base, with the same user experience, same developer experience, same set of tools, and, and so forth. Uh, the last bullet is very important. We know this middleware platform is not perfect, and we certainly don't really expect it to be perfect over the next 10 years either. And the reason for that is computer science is a very young discipline, right? We, it's 50 years old, 60 years old kind of area. And uh, civil engineering, which is 5,000 years old, still continues to innovate. And if we say that, okay, we're done, you know, this stuff is all done, now you just go on and do your thing on top of that, uh, that cannot possibly be true. If so, we're all not that smart. Uh, so, so we certainly believe that uh, the, the stuff that we create is the best we can do at this point. But in another two years, another five years, things will change. When, the, when the, the mechanisms, when the ideas, when new concepts, new innovations come up, we look back at what we do and say, OK, is this still the best thing we can do? If not, we make a course correction and try to adjust and go in a slightly different uh, direction. And I'm going to talk a little, about, little bit about kind of a bunch of things like that we're doing after 10 years and, and why we're doing it. And, and, and uh, so you understand how this model uh, has worked for us and how it works. So on a long-term basis, our view is uh, not to be just a vendor, because we want to be somebody that 
the, our customers rely on as the partner from a technology perspective to keep you moving forward as well. Pretty much every customer we have is very uh, technologically advanced. All of you guys are interested in looking at how do I do things better, how do I do things differently, how do I build a competitive advantage. And, and of course, you can't do that if you sit at any given spot. Standing still in a changing world means you're going backwards. So our model, our motivation is to become is someone that you trust to come along with you on that journey, not just someone you buy something and then pay a license fee and be done with it. That also reflects in our business model, that we don't have a one-time payment model. We have a model of we have to keep earning your business every year. Right? That means we can't do something and just walk away and say, okay, we're done, now let's move on to the next sale. It doesn't work like that. So we've been doing this for 10 years, as you saw in the slide deck, uh, uh, in, in the video a few minutes ago. Uh, and, uh, and of course, when you, you know, when you complete 10 years, it gives you a chance to kind of look back a little bit at the 10 years and see what have we done, what have we achieved, how can we do things better, what are the things we want to do differently, and so forth. It's also a chance that, that I've taken uh, to kind of look ahead at the next 10 years. When we started, we had a long-term vision. We knew very well we were not going to build our three products and our remaining products uh, in, in one or two or three years. We knew it was a long-term path that we were embarking on. The company was always set up to be a long-term company. It was not set up to be something that we sell and make some money and go start another company and so forth. Uh, a, a, so we now look, this is a good chance for us to look 10 years down the road and say, where are we going? How do we, what are the things we've done right? What are the things we need to adjust? Where do we want to make significant adjustments and so forth? So let me kind of talk you through on things that, that we have done, both at the business level and as, at the technology level, uh, to uh, to kind of realign some things as to how we do things. And it will help you understand, again, why the way we operate and how we operate. So let me start with the business side. So uh, uh, we've been committed to open source from the beginning. Every piece of software we build is 100% open source. We don't hold anything back. Uh, we give all, there's no enterprise version, children's edition, none of this nonsense. Uh, all of the code is available. Anybody can download. And we know we have thousands of people who download and use the software in production and never buy any support from us. That's fine. We have no problem. That's the way open source works. We ourselves consume a lot of open source. That's the beauty of open source, that you take and you produce. So we take a lot of open source technology, and we create our own thinking and our own value-added offerings and our own solutions on top of that, and we put it back out in an open source world. Uh, and, and then we produce this technology, put it up on our website, then we market it. The way we market it also, so we have our user conference. We, we have a lot of content we create. We do all kinds of digital content, webinars to whatever that we do, every kind of digital marketing activity. We talk to uh, wonderful analysts to brief them on various things on what we do, why we do, how we do it. Uh, we sponsor some events and so forth. So basically raise awareness saying, hey, we are out here, we are doing this. If you have a problem that you need some technology to solve, and if you are fit, then give us a try. So my challenge to the marketing team is get to the point where every single enterprise architect in the world, everybody like you, when they have a problem for which we might have a technology solution, gives us a shot. And once they give us a shot, if we don't make it, that's a product fault, and then we will work on that and then improve that. So, so a, a, every customer we have is an inbound customer. We don't, as a business, we don't have any traditional field sales type people. Right? This is very different from every software company in the world. Every other software company in the world operates in the, in the usual model of you have salespeople who are paid a commission to go out and meet customers and go and sell the product. We don't do that, that uh, because that's not the way things work in, in the world of open source, in the world of Google, in the world of technology, where the customer is fully educated on all the alternatives. Customer is fully aware of what choices they have. There's nothing really a salesperson can go and come and tell you that is new, that is not known about the product. Our account managers are your relationship manager with WC2. They work with you to help you navigate, figure out what's the right way to engage with us. The product itself is supposed to sell itself. If the product is flawed, we'll fix it. If the product is perfect, well, you love it. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure not, none of the products are perfect here. We, we, we are quite familiar with that. Uh, and and we, we want to work with you to improve the product in that front. So inbound is, is how we do everything. So every, all the sales, all the partner stuff, we, we, we've done some experiments in the last few years. Uh, uh, as you can imagine, this is not normal, right? No software company that does this. That means investors, uh, potential investors, they don't like this kind of stuff. Like, well, what do you mean you're going to give all your software away and then you're going to sit in back and relax until people come to you to buy it, right? I didn't give you money to go sit and relax. So I uh, said, so, well, that's the way the new world works. So, uh, and, and so it's, we had to do a little bit of experimentation. We finally committed saying we're not doing that anymore. 
100% committed to this model of inbound. And then the last point is important. So one of the things we, we of course, want to make sure is that you are successful. If you use our technology and your project fails, as, as a company that doesn't sell licenses, as a company that sells maintenance and support for the software, if your application, your product, your solution, your project doesn't take off, we don't make any revenue. Right? We might make some revenue helping you, some little bit of services up front, but that's not what we're really interested in. In order to fund our product development, we need to get to the point of you are successfully using the product and generating value for yourself, and then giving us a, a support contract for that product. So customer success is very important. So one of the things that we've, we've realized we didn't do very well in the last uh, so many years is working closely with you to really define what does it take for you to be successful, and then making sure we provide that level of engagement. So the account manager's job is a lot harder now, is to really work with customers to help figure out what does it take to make whatever the thing you're trying to do successful in terms of our level of support, our engagement. And then insisting with you that that's what it takes, and that's the way we have to engage. And if that's not, that's almost like a, we, we want to get to a point where we can give a guarantee saying, you do this stuff with us, it's going to work. Right? There's no you know, if, then, but, else beyond that. Um, and, and in order to do that, we will have to work with you to figure out what's the right engagement, what's the right kind of uh, people that we, we need to work with you, uh, what's the uh, number of times we need to come and visit you on a technical scale, all of those things. Right? And, and of course, that's what gives us revenue at the end of the day. So that's what uh, our focus is is to really continue to give the products away 100% open source. We're not backing off from that at all. And, and, and then let people know we exist, let people figure out that we can do various things for them. Have customers come to us, potential customers come to us, evaluate, try it out, kick the tires, build something, be successful with whatever they're trying to do, and then go live and then buy production support. Right? That's the model that our business is built on. And it's, we've refocused on that and adjusted various little bits of things and committed to that 100%. <clears throat> Let me talk a little bit about the product strategy. So, so we have a lot of products, as you know. Uh, we have 24 products on the website. Actually, we just added a few more today. I'm going to talk about that. A, a product strategy is, uh, uh, the first 10 years, the product strategy was focused on building servers, building middleware servers that do various capabilities. And we invested a lot of time into creating a runtime that is memory efficient, has a flat line memory growth as time goes along, uh, is secure, is scalable, is manageable, and so forth. One of the things we didn't do very well was focus on also what does it take to build something for them. So we have a developer tool. We have Developer Studio. But the, the tooling was not part of each product team. The way we are organized as a company, we, we run the company as a single integrated engineering team. Right. We have 340 engineers, and everybody works on one piece of software, one code base. Everything works as a collection of features running on top of the kernel that we have built. I'll talk briefly about that in a minute. Uh, yet the tooling itself was something that not the, uh, sorry, let me back up. And then actually the product was, is something which simply collects a collection of features that require a particular packaging and then ships it out with that uh, label. So if you look at the ESB or API manager or identity server, it picks up a set of features that is what defines an ESB or an API manager or an identity server and gives it to the market as, okay, we got one of those things. And here's what you can do with it and so forth. The components themselves come from all kinds of teams. Every single product has at least 75% overlap with other products. If you count the number of features in a given product and intersect them, more than 75% come from other teams. Right? So which is very unique in how we operate. So now we've gone further into that and refining that. But the, the major change we're making from now on is to say every product team is going to build not only a runtime, but also a tool for the product, but as well, and, and further analytics for the product. So we have, we're making, so we've had Carbon being the runtime platform. Carbon is our middleware platform that we build on top of OSGI, on which we build all these middleware capabilities. That's our runtime platform. We are converting Developer Studio into the tooling platform and saying every tool, every product, every, will ship a, a capability for that tool as on top of the Developer Studio tooling platform. And then the analytics side, data analytics server, which if you were here yesterday, there was a tutorial on it and there are further talks on it, is now again becoming a platform from our product perspective as a platform for creating analytics for each product, whatever the definition of analytics makes sense for that product space. 
Of course, data analytics server is not meant only for WS2 products. You can analyze any kind of data with it, and, and that's one of its trends. Uh, but when you download the API manager and you download the analytics for the API manager, they will talk to each other, and instantly you get all the analytics that you possibly want about API uh, operations. And that's kind of the direction that we're on. So the product teams are getting broader responsibility for owning all three parts of building a product, not just the runtime part. And, uh, the runtime, the development tools, as well as the analytics side of it. Okay, and runtime, of course, comes with management and, and the operational management and clustering, scaling, all that stuff is part of the runtime. Uh, this is a big shift for us because this is not the way we've been working for the last 10 years. And, and we're kind of you know, restructuring the team, changing the mindset, uh, distributing capabilities into all the teams to, to get everybody to understand, look, if you're going to build a great tool for an API manager, you have to understand the API management domain 100%. You can't be at 75%, 80% understanding. So you can't outsource that to a different team which owns tooling for the whole platform. So we're now kind of collapsing that in a, in a completely integrated way on a per product basis. So this is a, this is a thing that's going to uh, sh scale out over the years from now on. Uh, it's not going to be in one, you know, one release cycle that will get everything done, but it'll happen as we go along step by step. Uh, we've also been doing all kinds of things uh, uh, on the platform level to really build the platform for the next 10 years. So as, as the technology core, we have Carbon uh, platform that we started off with uh, in 2003, actually, as an open source project and then started the company in 2005. And it's done really well. We've done all kinds of things. It scales very well. We handle uh, billions of transactions per day for our customers, um, have, have had no major security issues, uh, knock on wood for that one, uh, uh, and, uh, and, and so on. But yet, we know things have changed, and we want to move on and create new ideas. So uh, we, there's a whole bunch of things. I'm going to very quickly cover each of these. And there are specific talks on this. So if you're interested, you, you should certainly look into those and, and go into them. Uh, the first one is Carbon, the Carbon Kernel. Carbon Kernel is this OSDI-based platform that we created for creating our middleware features. We've done a, essentially a complete rewrite on that. By the way, the way we name our platform, platforms is based on Turing Award winners uh, from Kernel 4.2. 4.2 version is called the Turing Platform, which is our the Turing, was, well, Turing didn't get an award, but he created the thing, so we decided to give him, a, give him an award anyway. Uh, and the next release is going to be called the Hamming release. Hamming was the third award winner. Uh, and then that's getting uh, really a complete major rework. And it's kind of moving away from the, many of the core things that we built on for the last 10 years. In particular, Axis 2, which was the core of the carbon kernel, is now being taken out of the Axis 2 carbon kernel completely. And kernel has no core dependency on Axis 2 at all. Uh, XML, which has been a foundational uh, sort of a information model, uh, an architecture model within the kernel, is again coming out from the kernel. It's no longer kernel, core to the kernel. We will, of course, continue to support XML in the best possible way, but it's just not burned into the kernel. Uh, and, and so on. So a series of things that are designed to make the platform a, a lot more agile, a lot lighter weight, and a lot more uh, fluid than it has become over 10 years. And we had put on a bit of weight, so time to go on a diet and kind of you know, try something new, and that's what we're doing. We have two products that we built on this that are available for download today. Uh, as alpha releases, they're basically feature complete. They will be released within, uh, within this year. Uh, the gateway is actually uh, uh, quite interesting. It's a very high performant, lightweight uh, router, basically. It does about fi somewhere between 5 and 20 times faster than the current ESP in terms of uh, uh, routing, pure routing capability. And it's also going to be a, a foundation for a series of other things that we build. So currently, the API manager, for example, has the ESP as the gateway for the API gateway. That's going to change over the course of next year to be being based on the, on the new gateway runtime. And, um, uh, and then we plan to build a, a series of other things, the load balancer, the security gateway, file gateway, a bunch of things that are built on top of this new core runtime, which is very, very high performed, very lightweight, designed to make it easy to, to simply do the gatewaying part of the equation. And, and then more stuff uh, will filter out on top of that. We also have a new microservices product. Microservices, of course, is a bit of a buzzword. We don't like buzzwords. But at the same time, there are some key things about the concept of uh, singular function capability of being able to run it very quickly, being able to run it in a containerized environment, being able to scale it out up and down easily, and so forth that are meaningful. 
And when you have a server which takes multiple seconds to boot up when the, the container boots up in, a, in one or two seconds, uh, it's not very good. So, so the new uh, microservices server we just released today uh, is extremely lightweight, spins up in 300 milliseconds, and it's ready to go. Uh, and, and so it's really designed for a container kind of environment uh, and, and to run in this sort of uh, uh, in architecture where you have lots and lots of different services responding with very, very low latency, very high performance, very high scalability. And again, that's available today as well. Uh, so I already mentioned containers, and Carbon5 is doing a major change on the execution multi-tenancy side. So one of the key things about Carbon kernel was that it has multi-tenancy built in. So we are taking the execution part of the multi-tenancy out of the Carbon kernel, and depending on a container runtime. So currently we are mo uh, using Kubernetes. Kubernetes uh, supports Docker, and it'll, uh, it plans to support other container models as well in the future. Um, and what it effectively does is kind of marries a lot of stuff we've been working on at the Stratos level, which is the platform as a service, into the core platform and leverages the container runtime capability for doing all the execution multi-tenancy. Um, this is important because running multi uh, code in a single JVM in a secure way uh, is quite complicated and has some limitations. And that's the main reason we've decided to do this. And uh, again, it's uh, already done. The, the microservices server is, is running in this mode now. <clears throat> we have this product called Private Pass. Private Pass is basically the way in which you take the WS2 products, run it on a Pass framework. And we've been supporting that on Stratos only. Stratos is the Apache Stratos project that we originally created and donated to Apache some time ago. Um, we also will, we are supporting now Kubernetes as well. So if you want to run any of our products as containers in a private pass environment, you can run directly on Kubernetes. And if there is interest, we can certainly support Cloud Foundry as well. We don't see much uh, market demand for it, but if that uh, gets further demand, we have no problem supporting that as well as the pass framework layer. <clears throat> and then, of course, App Factory, which is the application pass that we've created on top of that, that adds the application lifecycle management. Uh, which also runs on Stratos right now, is moving completely to Kubernetes. The, the reason is Kubernetes gives you the ability to run, again, isolated code in, in, in a lot less expensive, a lot more lightweight model than running VMs, which is what Stratos was uh, supporting using OpenStack. Uh, so there's a lot of changes at the, at the container and the cloud level. And this, again, uh, is going to start shipping uh, essentially now. And we will be moving everything to this model uh, as, uh, over the course of this year. Uh, so analytics, I mentioned already, uh, the data analytics server is, is uh, uh, many people understand it as the new version of BAM, but it's actually much more than that. It's, it's a combination of the real-time batch interactive and predictive analytics. It covers, it, pro it integrates what we used to do in business activity monitor, which is the batch analytics capability, along with the full interactive one, very similar to ELK, um, and as well as the real-time one, which is a complex event process brought into it and Predictive, which is a machine learning uh, product that we built on top of that. And, and available across the board now, and, uh, and again, a very core platform for, for everything we do. So there will be an analytics companion for all the different products, plus we plan to build specific vertical analytics solutions as well. There are two that we are already working on, Fraud Analysis Toolkit, which is actually available now, which, uh, which is to let people do various kind of fraud detection scenarios uh, for event streams. Uh, using real time as well as machine learning, uh, and also log analysis. Um, of course, IoT and mobility is important. We've had an, uh, we, we released an enterprise mobility management product a couple of years ago. Then we took, a, we took a look at that and decided to refactor that into something that is completely independent of any kind of device type. It created something called the Connected Device Management Framework, which is then again a platform for creating uh, any kind of connected product that you want to integrate to that. Uh, the EMM 2.0, which is uh, about to go into GA, uh, a built on top of CDMF and, and adds support for the mobile device types. And, and then IoT server, which is going to, again, be released later this year, adds support for other any kind of connected device type. So it's something that we expect people to OEM. If you're building a particular set of connected devices and you want to build an architecture for that, then that's what IoT server is for. Download that and extend that, add the particular device types, integrate and then you get the analytics you, and, and so forth. So we're working on a lot of IoT analytics stuff as well and, and uh, trying to have a companion that comes right along with this that, that lets you analyze the data in whatever way you want and, and do various decisions. Um, 
one of the things about IT that I'm sure that you are under pressure from your users internal and external is to make things a lot more friendly, a lot more social, a lot more interactive, a lot more colorful, and a lot less boring enterprise IT-like. Uh, so we've been focused on that as well. We, we have this product that we created called Enterprise Store. We just released version two of that uh, about a month ago. And what that is is a store, is to create the store metaphor of, of an online store for any kind of enterprise IT asset. So whether it's an application, whether it's a, a, a document, any kind of IT asset can be put into that as a store and then made available to people with tags and categories so you can search and, and browse and make a bookmark and, and sort of do the normal store-like behavior that you do. Uh, governance registry is the first major product that is rebuilt on top of that store model. Governance, the 5.1 version was made available today and that provides a complete, again, a store metaphor for how you do governance and also integrates API governance into the same underlying architecture as well. Uh, the product we used to call user experience server is being renamed to a dashboard server. It's going to be GAing later, uh, early this next year. And dashboard server is taking the problem of saying, okay, I have information, I have various kinds of data streams. I want to be able to create a dashboard by taking uh, UI components that have been designed for those data streams and customizing and making my own personal experience. We see many customers wanting to do that. You have all kinds of information streams that are available in the enterprise and want to give the user the ability to pick and choose what things they look at and how they look at it. And dashboard server is designed fundamentally for that, that problem. Um, Process Center is a new product. It is a part of our BPM suite. We are working on a larger BPM story that covers the entire business process management uh, space. Process Center is a, um, is a store-like experience for letting you document and deploy and discover processes of all kinds. So in any organization, there are hundreds and thousands of processes. How do I get a book? How do I make a hotel reservation? Uh, how do I onboard someone? How do I uh, you know, decommission a server? And some of these are documented in English. Some of them are documented in, uh, in data flow diagrams. Some of them are documented in flow charts. Some of them are executable BPL process. Some of them might be BPM. And some of them might be Chevron diagrams, all kinds of mechanisms. And Process Center is something that lets you document all of those, put them into a store, let people discover them. And of course, when there are running process, uh, processes for them, integrate to the run times, get analytics, be able to understand what's going on, where, where is my instance of the book order, where is that happening, uh, where am I in the onboarding process, et cetera, et cetera. So it kind of integrates everything together. <clears throat> Um, and, and that's, again, there's a milestone that you can download today. Uh, uh, we're targeting to get it out in the first quarter of next year. App Manager is something we released earlier this year. App Manager is a combination of an app store as well as a, a way to manage uh, and provide a single sign-on integrated experience for everything that you put up within the organization as applications. Uh, so we are using this ourselves. So we ourselves have a whole bunch of internal applications, web applications, and third-party SaaS applications that we use. So we integrated our identity server to that. So once you log in once, you can SSO on, SSO on to any uh, external application as well as internal application. Plus, you get to create a dashboard of the applications you want to use, bookmark those, and be able to get to them quickly, and so forth. Uh, again, very exciting product. It's something that really makes the end user experience of your internal users much more interesting, because the internal user experience is now like a, uh, an app store, basically. You can go and pick and choose what you want to use. Um, a lot of these are built using a reusable component approach that we, have, we have created and we are improving. And once we get that a little bit more matured, we actually want to promote that as a way for people to build applications as well. So if you want to create your own application that has a storefront, pick up this UI component, and then it will give you all that capability out of the box. Uh, I'm running a little bit over time. Let me quickly go through this. So, so the integration platform also has had a series of updates. Uh, ESB released a new version. A uh, big part of that is focused on cloud-to-cloud -cloud integration. Uh, there's m more than 100 connectors that are in our connector store now that you can download and use. Uh, and the connectors are for basically all the major SaaS uh, capabilities that are out there. And, and also has an inbound transport model kind of dramatically changing how we did the, uh, the underlying ESP transports, making it easy for you to bring in a new transport and integrate to that. 
and, and that's been available since August. Uh, business process server added BPMN support. Now, in addition to BPL, uh, BPMN is, uh, is becoming more popular and, and is somewhat more appropriate for human-oriented workflows uh, than BPL is. And Message Broker uh, is just uh, releasing uh, its 3.0 product. This is a completely re-architected version. Uh, I'm very excited by this product in terms of what it can do and where it's headed. Uh, we've kind of moved away from having Cassandra as the data store for the Message Broker. Um, that, that had a series of complications. And this is a truly distributed uh, broker, which uh, is very performant and, and offers a, a, uh, multiple protocols as well, including MQTT and, and a bunch of others. All right, so uh, let me summarize and get out of the way here. A, um, as a company, you know, we, we don't believe in the model of one solution fits all. We create all these technical capabilities, all these components, because we know that to solve large-scale enterprise problems, you need a whole series of technology and a whole series of different things you put together. A snake oil is not going to work, and that's not the way we operate. So as a company, the reason we are able to produce all this technology within a, with a relatively small team is fundamentally because of the platform architecture we took on from the beginning and then now improving as we go forward for the next 10 years. Um, uh, this is a long-term vision. We, we know this is not stuff that gets done very quickly. And we're here for the long run. It's first 10 years is just the starting point. We've now rebooted a whole bunch of things, kind of aligned a new set of things, setting up for the next 10 years. Uh, the, the model that we're creating on the technology side, we believe, is a, is a better foundation for the next 10 years than the foundation we started with 10 years ago uh, to go on. And that's why we're making lots of changes. We know change always means challenge for customers. So we, 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 we will work with the customers on figuring out how to migrate and working on the right migration strategy, right way to adopt, and, and so forth. And this is something that, that, uh, that, that uh, we, we understand and appreciate that it's not an easy thing for you guys to make a change once you've you know, invested and built something. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we know that you want us to do that, even though there may be some early pain. Because if we don't do that, we are stagnating you. And, and that's not good for you guys. So that's something we, we keep in mind all the time. So thank you very much. I hope you have a wonderful time. We have uh, three more keynotes in the morning. And, and then we break into three parallel tracks. There's a lot of good technical content, uh, both from WS2 speakers as well as a bunch of your, uh, you, you speaking as well. Uh, if you're interested in particular product areas that I talked about, there are talks in each, uh, most of those ones. So you, I encourage you to go and listen. And if you have any, any, uh, any questions and things you want to discuss, I'm around the whole two days. So feel free to chat about anything anytime. Thank you very much, and enjoy the rest of the time.